Listeners and subscribers, hope all is well. I'm going to dive in straight into today's content and just let you know that I am feeling disappointment with the alternative media community and the alternative narrative community, um, how they seem to be embracing the upper aspects of the political system as if suddenly... Uh, the two-party system is a, a mechanism in which we can really usurp control from the deep state and the powers that be. I mean, this is the system that keeps us locked down and in a tribalism mentality, so we're constantly fighting each other, so we don't ever come together to combat or strategize against the individuals who are keeping us um, at each other's throats. I think that's very interesting. And also that they narratives these individuals are embracing to try and justify their belief systems uh, for example you know we we know that the, the two-party system the politics in the united states is often used as a vehicle to perpetuate corruption but somehow some way uh, it has entered the alternative media mindset that donald trump is going to be this this leader against the opposition deep state that he is a, this this bastion of truth and he is going to be able to help combat certain uh certain of the nefarious underpinnings uh i, I don't buy that T to justify how trump has been handling these things they say i mean it's almost as if individuals are coming up with excuses for him right that uh, the deep state is trying to usurp power at the presidential and vice presidential levels so that the uh, House Speaker, in this case Nancy Pelosi, would be um, sworn into power. That using things like Stormy Daniels and you know the Mueller probe and other other legal actions against him has all been attempts to try and delegitimize his power and, and get him uh, get him out so that the deep state can get in. As if you know Trump is completely separate from the deep state. I'm not saying he's a deep state member, but we're talking about the puppet in chief, the the president. You don't really get to those upper echelon levels without capitulating in some way to new world order initiatives, um, the tyrannical tiptoe. I, I I don't see how individuals like that even get into those institutions without in some way um, having been reconciled into those uh, in, into those uh, campaigns. And then you have individuals to help curb this narrative. I remember martial law during the Obama administration and before was something that the people didn't want. You know, even in the alternate narrative community, um, mainstream, you know, martial law was something that was this totalitarian military style lockdown that they were going to use as this ace in the hole to um, really rein in this tyrannical order and prepare the people psychologically and mentally for this to for this transition to come and that after um we'd really start to see aspects of the new world order unfold and i'm under i'm under no delusions that we are currently living within the new world order and, and everything that's been going on has been all a part of that train um, to get us complacent, the complacency of fools to get us complacent in in the agendas that are happening and the media, the the alternative media has begin to begun to adopt certain narratives that are, are are quite concerning. They're disconcerting when you're starting to consider things like martial law, because now the martial law scenario is being being painted as a good thing. That these these evil liberals and the the deep state, uh, certain members of the deep state are getting ready to have action taken against them. But first, what has to happen first before this this thing we've all been waiting for can happen we have to have martial law uh we have to have martial law so that the white hats or the good guys can do something about certain members of the deep state or the bad guys um i think that is a very sketchy narrative being painted in the alternative narrative community and that people are starting again it starts to sound like they're making excuse excuses for why trump is doing what he's doing even though he's falling right in line with what any other politician has done I mean, again, since when has the system been legit? Since when has uh, voting on those upper, uh, the upper aspects of the political system, since when are we putting, you know, our faith in that? That, <laughs> I mean, aren't all the presidents related? Aren't they all not just related, but related to, you know, one guy, King John Lackland of England? He was the signer of the Magna Carta. I, I, I think that when we start to look at these things, how we, the angle we used to look at this was we were very skeptical of any government agency, left, right, middle of the center it, it didn't matter but now we're starting to warm up to the idea that we can embrace this system and somehow we'll be able to fix it uh with president donald trump's help I, I i don't know where we suddenly started putting faith in these these bad actors um 
we have another government shutdown potentially coming up what a February 15th after uh, this brief opening expires and we're poised to see more of the same thing I mean this is just your your typical run-of-the-mill stuff where you have millionaires convincing you know people who are making a certain amount of money a year that people who are making less money than them are the criminals you know you have uh, and isn't that the height of exploitation where we have individuals like millionaires like Donald Trump who offer these jobs to these illegals which give them incentives to come here I, I feel like this is the height of chicanery uh, you you have to really stomach some of this hypocrisy that comes out of the left right system and even from Donald Trump I know there's individuals who've fallen in line with the conservatives that everything Trump touches turns into gold and you know they'll find an excuse for why he wasn't able to get something done but when since when did we take our our scrutiny off those individuals and off the off the system and start to think that maybe something can be done within those realms if only we have the right person in power right if you think congress or president is going to solve your problems you're more short-sighted than you realize this system is this is exactly what the system wants it's, it wants the people to be endorsing these narratives now we need martial law when martial law was a bad thing um Donald Trump isn't part of isn't part of any new world order initiatives or any new world order train. He's actually trying to help us against it. I, I just think that embracing these things wholeheartedly, uh, it, it's it's something that it's it's more dangerous. It's more danger than it's worth. And I mean, this is something that you have to think about if you think you know if we're just talking about a wall issue, we're talking about jobs Americans don't want and millionaires and business owners who are offering these jobs to these people. We're being pitted against these individuals by the higher ups, the elites, the people who are making more money than we'll ever know what to do with. You know, it's it's just it's very interesting when we start to absorb these narratives and buy into them. It's easy to point out one person and blame them. It's the legals. It's the Mexicans. It's it's the South Americans. It's all these. It's it's all these the terrorists, the people that are coming into the country. Now, really, we're buying the narratives. The mainstream media is forcing down our throats. We're now embracing these narratives. The media is spoon feeding us as if it's legitimate. We're endorsing this system as if it's legitimate. Uh, what happened to the scrutiny? What happened to wondering about the individuals? I mean, did the New World Order suddenly stop? You know, and I, I'm I'm not uh, maybe I'm being a little bit cynical here, but I'm just posing these questions because I'm I'm seeing how things have changed from before to now to where the very things we were opposing in the alternative narrative community, we see individuals breaking ranks with that and saying, well, maybe this isn't so bad. Maybe we'll actually get something done uh, within these spheres because we have the right person in as that's really what it comes down to. And now we have the situation unfolding with Venezuela. And you have to understand, oftentimes when situations unfold with Venezuela or any anywhere else, you know, across the pond, these are often proxy wars. These are these are done in place because really the 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 intention is to obfuscate, you know, some other power, whether it's Russia or China. You know, that's what happens with with North Korea. That's what's happening with Venezuela. We have this Western uh, backed opposition that we're trying to put in. Um, you know, Maduro versus Juan, and really it's coming down to, and there in, in Venezuela, who the military will listen to, right? And the economy there has been in free fall. They have this socialist government, and and now we're we're starting to see when you know whenever the U.S. gets involved in foreign affairs, there's bombings and tear gas and terrorism and death and you know all this stuff. Since when is the United States you know escaping God's judgment for what the United States has been perpetuating uh, across the entire geopolitical landscape? I mean, are we suddenly no longer due for judgment? Is the United States again suddenly this this bastion of honor? Uh, what happened? What happened in the last three years? How how did the alternative um, narratives shift so much in favor of these of these systems? So we're no we're no we're no longer remember everything that somebody like Trump is touches to, turns to gold, and we can't look at, at what he does as uh, possibly being connected to anything nefarious. What's happening in Venezuela and, and Trump endorsing the opposition that has nothing to do with any nefarious underpinnings at all. The sanctions against Venezuela's oil that are supposed to be relieved if the opposition comes into power. Uh, it, it's very interesting. And then we hear uh, individuals on the mainstream news media making parallels from Venezuela um, to America, particularly about whether the, the military, who the military listens to, because there were some issues brought up with, it was Circa, the caravan when 
Trump sent military members down to the border and um, Americans were like, well, you know, military isn't supposed to act as law enforcement. And in some cases they were operating in that capacity and people kind of just turned their eye to that or, you know, didn't bat an eye. Um, at least the forever Trumpers, they, well, this is, this is all part of the strategy and he's playing 4D chess. I mean, I haven't heard an excuse. You know, I mean, again, I, I am a conservative and I, I do support uh, some of Trump's policies, but I'm not a forever Trumper. I'm not somebody who's going to endorse something uh, that's good for my party and not good for uh, the American people. I think we're getting away from that. We're not, we're, we're, fi we're too focused on fighting, you know, the left and the right fighting, uh, the left and the right fighting each other, that we're not coming together and fighting the common enemy. And that has been the main goal of politics uh, for the longest time is to get, as long as the people are distracted and they're fighting each other, they don't come together to fight the people that are really in power. And that's what we need to look at. But, you know, back to this Venezuela thing, the connections they've been making, um, they are wondering if the military knows who to listen to if some type of coup d'etat thing were to happen, right? That's very, and that's a very interesting narrative being painted with uh, supposedly uh, a coup power grab happening right now with, you know, Mueller probe being used strategically and all these other legal actions against Trump to, again, to try and usurp power at the presidential and vice presidential levels to, to get the Speaker of the House in power, which in this case would be Nancy Pelosi. Um there's just been a lot of fringe, I would call them conspiracy theories and excuses being embraced to try and make sense of this new narrative that, that Trump is trying to throw a wrench into the new world order. I don't know how true that is. I, I, I don't see it personally. If, if you were asking me, I'm just putting the information out there and just wondering what's happened, why individuals are breaking ranks um, in, in, in the in the alternative narrative community. Uh, I feel like even in the, even in the, taking out the nefarious underpinning optics and only looking at things from strictly political side, there is this initiative that, to drive a wedge in between the ranks of both conservative party and the liberal party. Like there's agent provocateurs in each party um, trying to radicalize uh, the right and the left and make it more um, far left and far right than anything resembling you know moderate or centrist I, I really think that that is an active campaign and initiative being um perpetuated on the people right now that it's not they've already got the left and the right fighting each other that's already happened right but now they're trying to get individuals within the right and individuals within the left fighting amongst themselves um they're trying again they're trying to radicalize make things more um, extreme left and more extreme right. And those are the narratives that get espoused in the mainstream media. And then individuals um, in mass consume that content because it's easier to brainwash thousands at a time than one at a time. And then all of a sudden we're, um, th those narratives are entering the alternative narrative community and they're being spun in this positive way where, you know, the reason why Trump can't get things done is because he's combating the deep state. Um, power is about to be usurped at the vice and presidential levels uh, so we can get more deep state operatives in place. Uh, a part of how we're trying to fight that with the whole QAnon business is that we're going to enact martial law to stop any of this from happening. All the while, you know, <laughs> you have the elites in the background with their hands together, smoking their cigars and just laughing that they were able to to put the people against the people I, again because i've talked about how people are waking up and the system is adapted to that and this is what that looks like it really the, the system is just adapting its content to so it could pacify the individuals who are waking up you know the, a lot of this QAnon information it makes people feel special to be privy to this type of information so you know they absorb it and they espouse it and when it comes back wrong or that it wasn't a hundred percent kosher you know they'll make excuses and, and try and defend it and i think that's what's happening again the system has has is caught on to the individuals waking up that they're starting to question things more so they just put more more things out there to muddy the water so we can't come together and see anything clear and as long as people are fighting each other i mean again with even within the ranks saying well you know the political system is something that we can use to our advantage the political system is something that uh, can't be used at all um, there's a lot of different schools of thought and I understand that it's healthy to have a bit of skepticism. It's healthy to come together and wonder and speculate about some of these things. But when we start to be make, when we start to make excuses and, and, you know, start to deny some of the things that we've always held true to and, and looking at how the system has, has been 
played against us, how it's not really changed all that much. All it's doing is just trying to encompass more people as they you know wake up, so to speak. And I don't like using the word wake up. It, it, it implies this sudden miraculous epiphany and instant understanding of all this. It's a continual process and it involves being wrong like i've told people i am i've been wrong before and i will continue to be wrong but i'll admit that when i'm wrong i'm not going to make an excuse for for why i believe what i believe and i'm not going to try and uh do something for my party at the detriment of myself or at the detriment of americans and i, I think it's be, things are becoming more like that and we see if you know anything it's how again with venezuela you've got brexit uh, things happening with China and Russia. You see, if you can see behind me, I, I, ha I put little post-it notes about what's going on in certain areas of the world so I can you know, write it down or talk about it later, uh, keep notes on myself so I can keep notes for myself so I can j keep track of a lot of this stuff and, and put to start to put two and two together. So when you start to do something like this and you put a, a, what's happening in this place and what's happening in this place and you start to connect the dots, they're not they're not so isolated. They're more, they're more integrated and baked in than you might realize. And I think that's one of the big issues here is that people don't take into consideration what's happening across the pond and plug it into what's happening in their, their home area. You know, um, I understand the United States is this big, powerful country, but I think the, the landscape of what we currently know is getting ready to change, right? The world as we know it is about to change, that the United States is either going to give its power over to or be rolled into and, and evolve into the, the the system that will ultimately be governing the, the world, the, the new world order, you know, the one world system, the, the one world currency, the one world religion. And I, I, I still really do believe that that is a core part of what is going to be happening to the people, to individual states, nations, everything. It's all tied into that, and this is all part of the process. They're breaking down certain countries. It's, it's order out of chaos, so the phoenix can rise out of the ashes. They're going to bring order out of this chaos, and this is it's the problem-reaction-solution, the Hegelian dialectic. They create the problem in which we react to and demand a solution that they've already had in the works for, for a while. So, I mean, that's, that's literally how they play against the people um, they put out a problem then the, the people they want uh, they react to that problem they want a solution that solution's already been tailor-made and prepared in advanced and I think with that I'm going to end it before it gets any longer um, we'll, we'll definitely be diving into more content because I have more to rant about but uh, thanks for stopping by California Carter signing off